Okay, welcome back to Tio Plo TV and thank you for joining the Average Golfer. I'm back at my home course, Heswell Golf Club. Not to play a round of golf, but I'm with a special guest to the channel. It's Carl Morris from The Mind Factor. Good to see you, Andy. So we'll start off. Welcome to the channel. My pleasure. First of all, explain Carl Morris, The Mind Factor. What is that? What's it all about? Well, we've been around the best part of 20 years now. I mean, it sort of started off from my own kind of failures as a, as a player, whereby you know, I'd worked so hard on technique on the range, but could never really transfer it onto the golf course. And I okay. just became fascinated with the whole psychology of the game and performance of the game and, and what tools and techniques I could, I could share with other people. How many golfers say they hit it better in practice? Most oh, people, yeah, yeah, most yeah, people yeah, do. Yeah. How, many, how, how many people say that they play better with the mates than in a competition? So, yeah, yeah. so the whole area of, of, of performance has been a fascination for all those years. And you know, I've been fortunate in that time to work with some pretty good players, work with a number of major winners. And you know, I've always tried to make things very practical and applicable. And, and I think that you know, some of the principles that apply to a tournament player are exactly the same as a guy trying to break hundred for the first well, time or, or win the monthly medal or whatever. That's one of the questions I was going to ask. I did read that you've worked with six major champions, is yeah, that right? Yeah. And I'm here today with the average golfer. Yeah. And But the principles in terms of the mental side of the game apply exactly the exactly same, the same. whatever level you're at. You know, if, if, if you're nervous, if you're nervous trying to win the club championship, you're yeah. nervous. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. As, just as, you know, I'm sure Molinari was feeling it a couple of weeks ago yeah. at, at Carnoustie. So it, it's about understanding. The principle of everything that I do, and it pretty much comes down to one word, and that one word is attention. Okay. And it's very much about every individual, I call it becoming an attention detective. Okay. Understanding what you as an individual need to put your attention on to get the best out of your game. Right. You know, a lot of times, a lot of golfers have their attention all over the place. You yeah. know, they'll be trying to do various things in the swing that may work on the, on the range, but tend not to work on the, on, on, the on, on, the, on the golf course. And we've got some really interesting stuff now about, you know, whether you're focusing what we call internally or externally. Some people thinking about body parts when they swing can work quite well. But for the vast majority of people, actually thinking a little bit more about the golf club hmm. and what you're actually trying to do with the golf club is, is really much more efficient for a lot of players. So that moves their attention from the situation they're in to a particular focus on... Yeah, it's the biggest cliche ever, isn't it? You know, play one shot at a time. Yeah, yeah. But, but actually, if, you, if you're performing well and your mind's in the right place, you are absorbed in this task of moving this golf ball to that target. Yeah. So then we sort of said, well, OK, if I want to move this ball to that target, what shot do I want to hit? I need to be really clear on that. And then, what, what sort of thing, what do I need to have my attention on with the golf club to make that shot happen? Right. So actually, in many ways, People say to me, what, what, do you, what do you get people to think about? My job most of the time is to get them to think less. Because right. we're drowning in thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we there's overdo so, it a bit, don't we? Yeah, there's so much information out there. You know, there's so much technology now, which is great. But actually, when you're out on the golf course, yeah, none of that matters. Well, I'm not saying none of it matters, but it's about usually it's about shrinking it down right. to a couple of really key things. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and so often players will have said to me over the years when they've played well, they've won a tournament. It, it's so obvious that it seems so simple. We're almost frightened of making it simple at this yeah, game. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. almost oh. like we, we like to things to be difficult. Like some people, yeah, some people like to make it complicated. So my mission's been to simplify the whole thing. Well, the, the interesting thing was I did a video uh, a few weeks back now, and it was all about how to improve all your handicap. Yeah. And we looked at a number of different areas that might uh, help in doing that. And one of the things we talked about was the mental attitude oh. towards the mental approach. And... Uh, I wish I took the person's name down, but one of the subscribers suggested it'd be great to work with a mind coach and do a video that we're going to film right now. So thanks to whoever that was, got in touch with Carl. The good thing was it coincided with the time when Carl's got a new book out and it focuses on putting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it's the, the lost it's art. Called, of it's called The Lost Art of Putting. Okay. Uh, available at all good bookstores. Yeah, we'll, we'll, put the, we'll put the links below for the book. <laughs> no, yeah. um, and I very much feel, myself and co-author Gary Nichol, very much feel that, that putting tends to be very scientific now. 
You know, we've got a lot of data on what we're doing with the putter and a lot of data on path and face and things like that, which is great. Yeah. But if you listen to the best putters in the history of the game, you know, Ben Crenshaw, Seve, even Bobby Locke, Gary Player, they, they, they talk in an artistic way about being out there and much more about feel, yes. much more about creating each individual putt rather than rigidly trying to repeat yeah. a certain stroke. So it's, we're not saying don't work on technique. Yeah. We're not saying science isn't important. But if you've been struggling with an overload of that, yeah. hopefully we'll connect you back. You know, we, we can see just some kids practicing here, and these got, these kids are absorbed in the art of getting the ball in the hole. Yeah, they're not overcomplicating. They're not overcomplicating stage, it. You know, and the, and the curious thing is, you know, most people are better at putting when they're young yeah, yeah. than when they're old, and it shouldn't be that. We should get better. We should, be at, we should get better at a skill, yeah. but you know, people don't necessarily get worse at piano playing as they get older. Yeah. You know, yeah. but at putting, most people say, "I put it great as a junior." Yeah. yeah. Well. The book focuses on six principles, yeah. and we're going to we're going to look at possibly three in the videos. We'll see how it goes, but we're going to start off. What's the first area we're going to look at? We're going to look at do what I call your story. Okay. Uh, in the, in the sense that it's not my hard luck story, is it? Because I could go on for a it while. It can be if one. you like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It can be if you like. Basically, the principle is that we are all a bunch of stories. Okay. So what we do is we carry a bunch of stories around with us. And if you, if you think about it, if you hear a story enough times, if you repeat it enough times, it. guess what happens? Yeah. You start to believe it. There's a, there's a, a story that we, that we quote in the, in the book about, about stories, and it was about a very famous coach called Harvey Pennick. Okay. who people viewing might remember a very famous book he did called The Little Red Book. Okay. And Pennick's two, f two most famous pupils were Ben Crenshaw and Tom Kite. Right. Not, not, bad, not, yeah, a, bad, yeah, not yeah, a bad start. Yeah. And apparently they were both going to go out on the PGA Tour at the same time. And they had dinner with the, the, the coach just before they went on the PGA Tour. And I think it was Ben Crenshaw, or maybe Tom Kite, said to Harvey Pennick, he said, Mr Pennick, if you had one single piece of advice that you'd give us to be successful on the PGA Tour, what would it be? And he looked at them both and he said, make sure that you go to dinner with good putters. Right. And what Good seems story. a very trite comment was genius in it. And basically yeah, yeah. what he was meaning is, hang around with people yeah, who put yeah. well. Yeah. Because misery loves company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's amazing with the game of golf. There's been, and I used to see it when I, when I played, it's almost like this badge of honour whereby, oh, he's a great ball striker. And you'll hear golfers say, I went out today and I played and I knocked it on 12 greens, but I three-putted six times. They almost can't wait to tell you. Yeah, the negative. The negative of <laughs> yeah. how bad they putted. You know, and, it, and I've heard the other side of it where people say, oh, he's not much of a ball striker in, but he's a bit of a blade merchant. Yeah, yeah. As, though he's, as though it's against the rules to, yeah, to, yeah, to, no. to, to hold a few putts. So what we do go into with the story is to, is to look very carefully at the story that you keep telling yourself. Okay. What's the narrative that you give yourself after you've played a round of golf in regards yeah. to your putting? Now we make the point that if you've been a bad putter all your life, you can't just suddenly sit under a tree, close your eyes and chant that you're wonderful. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's nonsense. But what you could start with, and this is the premise in the book, you could start with the premise that from today, you're actually going to learn how to become good on the greens. You're actually going to start the process of thinking very differently about your putting. Okay. Because when you then move on from the story to some of the other principles and you start to see some different results, then the story starts to change. Right. And one of the things that we say with the story is that you'll know you're getting better at putting, it's curious to say it, because you'll start to miss better. Okay. And that sounds a silly one, but what I mean is to say is you'll start to hit more putts and we'll go into the principle of pace. When you get better at pace, it's amazing how that ball starts to say, come here, that ball starts to grab the hole more often. Right. It's a really interesting thing, as I said, we'll, we'll go into that in the pace section. But when people start to see different results, when they start to practice in a different way, then, as I say, the story starts to change. Okay. But you've got to be very, very careful with the narrative that you constantly repeat. You know, St sitting in the clubhouse bragging to everybody about how many putts you've taken. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Uh, it's not that productive. Yeah, yeah, yeah not a positive. It, it, it's, you know, as I said, misery loves company. But it's the decision for me is do you want to keep telling yourself the same old story or do you want to hold some putts? Yes, okay. Because the thing is with putting, as Ben Hogan said, nobody can hit it good enough to put badly. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you, gotta, you can spend hours yeah. on the range working on your driver you, and hit it you further. You've still got to stick that ball. You've still got to knock the ball in the yeah, hole. Yeah. You know, okay. you've still you've still got to put well. So that's where we're going to start then. The story. So we're going to start with my story in this case. Okay. And uh, we'll move the camera around, and then we'll see where we go to next on this. It'd be interesting. Okay. Right, okay, so uh, Carl is well aware of my story. Struggling on the putting surface like many of us, and I think hearing what you said, um, I did consider myself to be a decent putter, and it's only, if I'm honest with you, it's only been the last two or three years, but what you're saying about focusing on technique, I'd 100% agree with, because everything I do now is all about, well, I must be doing something different than I used to yeah. in terms of my putting technique. But the, the next stage, and um, we've briefly talked about it off camera, is a real focus now is about pace, isn't it? That's one of the principles in the book. One of the really interesting things is if you ask most golfers and you say, well, okay, what's the two things that you need to get right to hold a putt? Obviously, one's line, one's pace. Yeah. And if you follow that up and say, well, if, if, if of the two things, which was potentially slightly more important, yeah. most golfers say pace. Yeah, yeah. And they're right. Try and get it in the bin lid. But they'll say pace, but what do they actually work on? If you think about putting industry, I, I think that most, back to attention again that we mentioned in the, in the first video, most people's attention when they put badly, yeah. I think, is back here. So they're very much focused on what they're trying to do, yeah. how they're trying to move the putter, yeah. they're, they're obsessed with start lines, they're obsessed with getting everything set correctly at address. Now I'm well, not I'm, saying that's... No, you have to do it. Our alignment's massive in all the putters. I'm not now, saying it's it? not important, but if you become Focused. If you become overly focused on that, yeah. if I'm so obsessed with line, it tends to be at the detriment of pace. pace. Now, yeah. here's the interesting thing with pace. My whole way of coaching putting changed a few years ago when I came across some, some research on, on pace. Because I was, I've been brought up a generation, you know, never up, never in, and yeah, you know, get, it, it get, get it past the hole and all the rest of it. But an interesting thing to, to look at with pace is if you imagine let's say we've got a let's say we've got a put here that's breaking in this direction okay now you imagine if you've got three golf balls traveling towards that hole at pretty much the, the correct pace yeah yeah dead weight dead weight yeah yeah how many of them have a chance to go in they could all grab the hole can't they okay they can all grab the hole at dead weight yeah yeah now the interesting thing is is if you just get your pace slightly wrong, there's something called the effective hole size, where in effect the hole actually shrinks if you don't get your pace right. Now if I, if I hit a putt with only enough pace to knock it, say, three foot past, yeah. how many of the three balls get a chance to go in now? Probably just the centre ball. It's just the it? centre ball. Mm. So the premise of pace is that if you get just a little bit better at pace, you actually don't have to be perfect with your line. Yeah, I still got the chance. And of the, the, what, what, you'll, what we find when we get people working more on pace, and again, the interesting thing is when you're working on pace, it tends to free you up a little bit. Yeah. Because you don't get so obsessed. You're not with, getting so robotic, are you? You don't get so obsessed with being perfect. Yeah. But when you get your when you get your pace right, all of a sudden now, instead of the instead of when people talk about the line into the hole. Yeah. Most people put a line on the golf ball that's like a chalk line. Yes. Now mentally, if you see that as being the line into the hole, I think that creates a lot of tension. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. However, yeah. if you saw the line into the hole as being three balls wide, yes. now which would you sooner do? Would you sooner send a ball down a chalk line yeah. or would you sooner or try and, and send it down, down a line yeah, this yeah, way? Yeah. As I said, we're not saying line isn't important. But if you've worked so hard on line for years and years and years, yeah, and it's not at, at the detriment of pace. Yeah. I mean, another fascinating thing that we'll, we'll, get, people, we'll get people on the golf course, you'll, you'll see somebody hit a putt that ends up like this, so it's four foot behind the hole. Mm. And if you had somebody hit a putt this way, so you're dead weight, say a, a, yeah, foot, yeah. A, a foot or so either side, yeah, yeah. people will go, oh, that was a dreadful putt. Yeah, but it's still. A and, and on this one, one, they'll go, oh, you gave it a chance. Yeah, yeah. No, you didn't. Yeah, yeah. Because at that pace, yeah, you got it virtually had back. no chance. Yeah. Remember the key principle with putting 
the one thing that you're trying to get to, it's the only time in golf where you want to use, well not the only time in golf, but the key thing in putting is gravity. Right. We're trying to get gravity, we're trying to get gravity to make that the ball do that. Now what's the one thing that can overcome gravity on a putting green? It's pace again. It's pace, it's yeah, momentum. Yeah. yeah. So when you start to think about that happening, and if I've got enough pace to override that, yeah. then it, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Th then I'm in trouble. Yeah. So my recommendation and something that we talk a lot about in the book is just just free yourself up a little bit. Yeah. Just go on the putting green. One of the exercises that we actually recommend is that you just take one ball and you go to a bunch of holes and you don't even read the putt. All you do is just set yourself up and just try and get the pace right. Yeah. And it's amazing how when you get the pace right, for a lot of people, the line kind of takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. My belief is that most golfers are a lot better at line than they think, but a lot worse at pace, pace. than they think. Yeah, 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 and that makes sense, wouldn't it? And, and at the very least, and if you think about it, you know, if you got better at pace yeah, from, said, a sort of 10, 15, 20, 30 feet, yeah. It's an easier two putt. Yeah, isn't it? you're yeah. going to. You don't want the four footer coming Mo, back. We talked about club golfers before. You know, most club golfers from probably 10 to 25, 26 handicap. Yeah. The quickest way of actually reducing your handicap would be eliminate uh, some three, three putts. Putt, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And and why do you three putt? Because yeah. of pace. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't you don't three putt. Sometimes you get the line completely wrong, but most times. Yeah. You, it's you've got an idea of the line, but it's, it's like you said, it's stopping that ball within a, a nice easy tapping, isn't it? If you don't make the putt. Because of pace when you watch bowlers crown green bowlers that's another interesting thing as well and you see the action of a crown green bowler they generally make very good putters but if you think about it when a crown green bowler is bowling i wouldn't imagine you'd ever see anybody looking at the ball <laughs> yeah, like yeah, this yeah. Yeah, yeah. But if you think about it, if you're yeah. obsessed with, with line yeah, no, and you're true, obsessed yeah. with everything here, yeah. you're actually shutting off a lot of information going, down yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. We're the only sport that we're not looking where we're going. Yeah, yeah. You know, the next that, best thing it? to looking where you're going is actually having a very clear representation of, of what the ball needs to do to go in the yeah, hole yeah. pace wise. Excellent. I enjoyed that. It makes a lot of sense. It just, it, it's, it, that's why we've called it the lost art. Yeah, yeah. The lost art of putting because we're just, we're just connecting back. We, we said to people, we want you to become more childlike and less childish. Yeah, yeah. Childish is getting throwing tantrums because you've missed the putt. Yeah. Childlike is just becoming a bit more fascinated by what the ball needs to do to go in the hole Absolutely. and a little bit less bound up in, in technical stuff. Brilliant. I hope that made sense to you, but it certainly did to me. And the pace thing's a massive one. And uh, like I just said there, the idea of eliminating three puts would make a massive difference to most of our scorecards, I guess. I'd certainly be into that category and just concentrating like we've just seen there, getting that ball up and around the hole, irrelevant of line, getting that pace spot on. Them tappings are a little bit easier as well for the ones that we don't hold. What are we on to next, Carl? Because we might as well be interesting. I'm going to carry this on going because we'll do another one of these key principles of the book. So what's next? The next one is uh, is visualization. Okay, let's move the camera. We'll try another hole and we'll do. We'll focus on the next principle, which is visualization. But hopefully, you've got something there to take away and concentrate on practicing all about your pace. Right, so we're two parts in, you've got your story, you've got to concentrate on pace, and we're now on to section three, which is about visualisation. So explain, and Carl, what's visualisation all about? Well, as we alluded to in the previous video, that golf is the only game where you're not looking where you're going. Yes. So if I'm a basketball player, if I'm going to free throw a line, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the rim. Yeah. You know, if I'm a bowler on a green, I'm looking at the at the jack. If I yeah. come into bowl at cricket, I'm looking to where I, I could go on and on and on. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much every sport. We're, we're all heads down. Yeah, pretty much every sport where you're trying to move an object to a target, you're looking where yes. you're going. Yeah. Golf, we're not, because the target's out here. Yeah. And then we set up and, and we. Yeah, yeah. Now the next best thing to looking where you're going is, is having a very, very clear representation of what the oh, task is, yeah, right. what the actual task yeah. is. I liken this in the book to what I call programming the sat-nav. Yeah. When you get in your car, you know, if, if I came here from Manchester today, uh, you know, and, and, I, and I just punched in the Wirral, 
I, I'd get somewhere near here, yeah, yeah. but I wouldn't get to Heswell Golf yeah. Club. Yeah. Now, I did punch in Heswell Golf Club and the postcode and all the rest of it, and then the car goes to work to find yeah, yeah, it because yeah. it's got a very, very clear Precise. map yeah, yeah. of what it's trying to do. Now, people get hung up on, on visualisation. I don't visualise this kind of stuff. It's a, it's a bit of a myth, really. What we talk about is the power of questions. Because if I said to you now, um, what's the first thing that you see when you walk in your house? Um, the hallway. Great. So at some level, because of that question, you created an image of yes, your hallway. Yeah. yeah. Right? So questions create images. Okay. And images are what we want to actually provide the brain and body something to work on to get the ball into the hole. Now it might seem the most ridiculously simple question, but with a number of tour players, I can remember in particular Graham McDowell, um, you know, I worked with him for an awful long time, but we always laugh about the fact that, I think just before the US Open win in 2010, we started to work with questions. Okay. And the simple question for a golfer to ask is when they actually look at a putt, when you're reading a putt, if you ask yourself the question, what does this ball need to do to go in the hole? If you think about that, and if you looked at a hole and asked that question, mm -hmm. what does this ball need to do to go in the hole? Your brain will come up with an answer to that question. Picture, yeah, yeah. And that picture will usually involve, some people see uh, a coloured line, some yeah, people yeah. see, do you remember this, the, 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 the action track that they used to be yeah, on yeah. TV mm -hmm. with the sort of the, 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 tr the travelling ball? The more vivid, and there's a lot of science that relates to this, the more vivid you are into imagery, yeah. as opposed to mechanics, the more you're able to perform on the golf course. Okay. Doing some mechanical work in practice is fine, yeah. but the best putters seem to be very much into what's going on out here. Now, if you think about it, if you ask that question, what does this ball need to do to go in the hole? One of the things that I really like the, the listeners to home into is when you ask that question, what does this ball need to do to go in the hole, is really home in on what we call entry point. So as you look at the hole, try to get a sense, if, if, you, if you look at the hole, where, where do you actually see the ball entering, the, entering the hole? Okay. Now, the great thing about entry point is, obviously entry point on a right to left put and a left to right put are going to be different. different yeah. But if I can create a clear representation of that ball going into the entry point, my brain, I think, well, I don't think, I know, subconsciously it's calculating pace as well. Yeah, so it falls back. So, the, so the, the image of the ball, the entry point, the, the vivid image, what does this ball have to do to go in the hole? When you start to see that, you're then providing your brain body system with that satellite navigation system. Mm -hmm. You're giving it a map to follow. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, as, as, as I say to a lot of players, you can't hole every putt, but what you can do on every putt is give yourself a great chance. chance. Yeah. Now, I, I, I even go as far as to say the next time people play, just try this. On, on every single, apart from tappings, obviously, yeah, yeah. on every single putt, just ask yourself that question. What does this ball need to do to go in the hole? Now, obviously, it's a bit more challenging from 50 feet. Yeah. You'll get a general sense there. But by asking that question, what does this ball need to do to go in the hole? What are you focusing on? Yeah, yeah. You're actually focusing on this putt in this moment. Yeah. This old cliche about oh, one shot at a time and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Well, you need a system to play one shot at a time. If you said to somebody, can you ask yourself a question on every putt today? Yeah, you could, you could do that. Yeah, yeah. Now, you might not hold everything, yeah. but I'm pretty convinced that you're giving yourself every chance. That's a chance, yeah. yeah, every, yeah. every chance. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, the other thing that, that questions do, relating to what we said at the, in the first video, questions control your attention. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. It just takes your mind away from you focusing on that one thing, aren't you, as well? And then I suppose you couple that with the, the pace that we talked about in yeah. the, the other section. The other section. And then you're getting that ball to travel. You get, you're getting that ball, you're getting that ball at better pace to travel. You're also then building in the line into it. And I'd ask people to play around with it. With, when you ask the question, what does the ball need to do to go in the hole? There's a section in the book where we talk about some top class players that say some people see a line, yeah. some people actually see a liquid. Yeah. They'll actually see a liquid flowing oh, yeah. down the green. Right. There's a great phrase, I think, that the ball, 
that the ball pours into the hole. Yeah, yeah. It's a great yeah, mental yeah. image to have of the ball actually pour. Yeah, yeah. You know, imagine some water travelling down a yeah. slope, and how it would pour. It in, how would it pour into the yeah, hole? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Right, another one for you to think about there: visualization. And uh, I've heard of, and I've, I've, I've heard a lot of people talking about visualizing uh, different shots out there on the golf course. Nice to hear it explained in a putting scenario from Carl. Uh, but you do hear it from the pros as well about how they stand there and you can sort of see them and I, and I assume that's the kind of mental approach that they're taking towards each shot that they play. Interesting to see it there adapted into putting. A couple of things to work with there. Thank you to Carl My pleasure. for uh, all that information you've just given. Don't forget the book is The Lost Art of Putting. Plenty more information in there. I assume three, other, three other secrets that we've not even gone into. Brilliant. So again, Links will be down below uh, in terms of how you can purchase the book. Take a look at Carl's website. I think that's the Mind Factor, isn't it, Carl? Mindfactor.com, yeah. Mindfactor.com. I appreciate Carl travelling and coming to speak to the average golfer's audience. As ever, appreciate any comments from yourselves. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you don't already. And I'm going to practice a few of these techniques and uh, hopefully putting gets a bit better. Right, I'll see you soon.